This video is sponsored by Longevity Technology. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about cellular senescence and a recent study that's been published in Cell Metabolism that has identified so-called oxylipins that are involved in the development of cellular senescence, but more intriguingly offer the potential for the detection of senolysis, which is the destruction of senescent cells. So in this video, I'll begin by giving an overview of what senescent cells are and ways in which senescent cells can be identified. We'll then take a look at some of the data in this paper and some of the oxylipins that they've discovered to be involved in the senescence process. We'll then evaluate how this information could have potential therapeutic value. So first then, what is cellular senescence? Well, cellular senescence can be thought of as a cell fate whereby cells stop dividing and enter a permanent arrest of cell proliferation and are characterised by many phenotypic changes, including cellular hypertrophy, nuclear and epigenetic rearrangements, and metabolic alterations. Moreover, they develop the so-called senescence-associated secretory phenotype, and this describes how senescent cells start secreting a variety of different biologically active molecules, and these include a variety of different inflammatory factors, and growth factors that can impact the surrounding environment of the senescent cells. And so we currently think that senescent cells have this so-called SASP to help mediate the pathophysiological effects. And so what that describes is the fact that these inflammatory factors help to reinforce and spread senescence to surrounding cells. Moreover, it can be used to activate the immune responses to help clear the senescent cells and get rid of them. And whilst this has been shown to be useful in wound healing and development, impairments in the clearance of senescent cells can result in chronic inflammation which could have deleterious pro-aging effects. And indeed, it's been seen in both mice and in human tissue that senescent cells accumulate with age. And so if senescent cells can drive chronic inflammation and have deleterious pro-aging effects, it was hypothesised that clearing senescent cells in a process known as senolysis using so-called senolytics, which kill senescent cells, may have benefits for reducing chronic inflammation and help to reduce the aging process. And so this has already been tested in a variety of different studies in a variety of different ways. This 2018 study used a combination of desatinib and quercetin, which together act as senolytics, and gave them intermittently to aged mice and showed that it alleviated physical dysfunction and increased post-treatment survival by 36%, while reducing mortality hazard to 65%. In a different study, they used a genetic approach to clear senescent cells expressing P16, which is an important gene in mediating the cell cycle arrest. And what they found is that in mice that had the clearance of P16 expressing cells, Compared to the control mice, it extended the median lifespan in both male and female mice, suggesting that the presence of senescent cells is shortening healthy lifespan. However, the efficacy of removing senescent cells for therapeutic use has had some setbacks in terms of being able to translate this idea to human use, most notably being the early clinical failure seen in Unity Biotechnologies UBX0101 for the treatment of osteoarthritis. And so part of the reason for this is that our understanding of senescent cells is ever expanding. And secondly, because detecting senescent cells and more in from that, detecting their clearance currently is quite a challenging thing to do that doesn't involve very invasive procedures. And one of the areas that is still under great investigation is of the senescence associated secretory phenotype, which at the moment has primarily been studied by looking at the proteins that are secreted mainly because this is a relatively easy thing to analyse. In comparison, other molecules that are secreted by senescent cells, such as different lipids, have been under-investigated. And so this nicely segues back to this latest cell metabolism paper, whereby they have identified that oxylipin biosynthesis seems to be reinforcing the development of cellular senescence, including the SASP, and allows detection of senolysis, so being able to detect when a senescent cell has been killed. And this work has come out from the Buck Institute. So the first thing they did in this study is look at what lipids accumulate inside cells that have become senescent. And what they found is that certain subsets of lipids significantly increased or decreased upon senescence. Notably, the most highly elevated senescence-associated lipid 
was a prostaglandin known as 1A1B dihomo 15 deoxy prostaglandin J2. You'll be glad to know that we can somewhat simplify that to dihomo 15 D PG J2, although it's still a bit of a mouthful. Anyway, prostaglandins are a subset of oxylipins, which are a really interesting group of lipids that are derived from the oxidation of polyunsaturated fatty acids, most notably the 20 and 22 carbon fatty acids such as arachidonic acid and adrenic acid, with dihomo 15 d PGJ2 deriving from an adrenic acid. And so these dihomo prostaglandins have been less well investigated than the prostaglandins that derive from arachidonic acid, the most famous which is probably prostaglandin E2. And so these oxylipins have a variety of physiological effects that range from inflammation, fever, vasoconstriction, pain, hair loss, asthma, and fibrosis. And so maybe unsurprisingly, the enzyme that can convert arachidonic acid into these different oxylipins, such as prostaglandins, can be inhibited by aspirin, which is a pretty well-known painkiller. And one of the genes that encodes the protein that gets inhibited by aspirin known as COX-2, standing for cyclooxygenase 2, was actually shown in another recent study to be involved in the senescence process, whereby COX-2 was observed to be upregulated in senescence and control the expression of multiple SASP components. And this activity was important for mediating so-called senescent surveillance, whereby the immune cells can get recruited in to clear the senescent cells, in this paper described in liver tissue. Anyway, to go back to this cell metabolism paper, so far we've seen that senescent cells accumulate highly this dihomo 15 d PGJ2. And this was also confirmed in FIVO, so in mice, whereby they saw increased upregulation of genes involved in oxylipin synthesis in mice treated with doxorubicin to induce the development of senescent cells in these mice. And when they cleared the senescent cells in this mice, you can see that the expression level of these different genes also goes back down. And what they nicely show in this study is that this accumulation of dihomo 15 dpgj 2 I think I'm getting quite good at this now, isn't just a bystander accumulating in senescent cells, but it actually seems to be able to reinforce the development of cellular senescence. And they showed that this seems to be happening due to the fact that dihomo 15 d PGJ2 seems to be able to increase the activity of the protein RAS, which is interesting given that constitutive high upregulation of RAS alone can induce the development of senescence, so-called oncogene-induced senescence. And increased RAS activity also increases the activity of P53, a protein that I'm very fond of, that to complete the circle also increases the synthesis of COX-2 and PTGDS, which are both involved in prostaglandin synthesis. And so you end up in this full circle whereby dihomo 15 d PGJ2 increases RAS activity, which then can reinforce its own production by downstream increasing the activity of the enzymes that enable its generation. And the interesting thing about this circuit is that it's so-called cell autonomous, it happens within one cell, whereby the dihomo 15 d PGJ2 is acting on the RAS that's in the same cell that it's in. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the dihomo 15 d PGJ2 seems to be staying within the senescent cell, and this is in contrast to most prostaglandins that are typically thought to be secreted by the cell. And so given this finding, the authors hypothesised that senolysis, the death of senescent cells, might be releasing this dihomo 15 d PGJ2. And well, their hypothesis was correct. This is seen clearly in this figure here, whereby they took conditioned media from senescent cells growing in culture and analysed the abundance of dihomo 15 d PGJ2. And so by taking this conditioned media instead of the cells, they can analyse what's being secreted by the cells. So when you've got senescent cells just treated with DMSO, which in theory shouldn't have any impact on the senescent cells, you can see that the abundance of dihomo 15 d PGJ2 is pretty low. However, when the senescent cells were treated with ABT263, which is a well-known senolytic, 
there is a great increase in the abundance of dihomo 15 d PGJ2, suggesting that this prostaglandin could be used as a biomarker for senolysis. And this is further supported with in vivo data from mice, whereby they also cleared the senescent cells with the same senolytic ABT263, and they found that mice that had senescent cells and treated with the senolytic compound showed increases in their plasma and urine of dihomo 15 d PGJ2. And so this has caused a lot of interest, given that urine and plasma are much less invasive than other approaches to be able to detect the presence of senescent cells. Moreover, it offers the potential to be able to identify and evaluate the efficacy of different senolytics to see if they are actually removing the senescent cells as is thought. And this is particularly welcome news given the fact that many senolytics are now in the early stages of different clinical trials for a variety of different age-associated diseases. So what would be interesting would be to see if there are other markers now that can be used to detect senolysis, in addition to this dihomo 15 d pgj 2 had to say it one more time, and also to see if this biomarker could be used for different types of senescent cells, as senescent cells aren't all the same, they arise in different contexts, in different tissues, induced by different ways, and so it would be important to investigate further if this prostaglandin accumulates broadly in senescent cells, and whether it could always be effective. And so all in all, this study further helps us to understand the role of lipids in the development of cellular senescence, and also highlights how this prostaglandin, I'll say it one more time, dihomo 15 d PGJ2, accumulates in senescent cells, but gets secreted on senolysis, which could therefore be used as a biomarker to evaluate the efficacy of different senolytics. So with that, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this week's video, Longevity Technology, for which I'm very grateful. Longevity Technology deliver high quality daily news and insights on research, investments and technologies that extend health span and lifespan. Find the link to their website in the description. So I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.